Well, I thought I would give you the last final bit of the old patch up the 70s figures. These are the ones we've been working on the last couple days. I saw the little bit of the video I did yesterday on some of the painting. This was it. Now, last night, I spent about an hour. I gave them the final washes, and then um, I did some black on the bases and went to bed. This morning, I got up and touched up any damage and detail I wanted to, and then gave them the flock the base. But now they're ready to be put in the collection. This was the cleric I liked. Um, again, all the colors were pretty much exactly what they were on the miniature before. I kept the dark black hair, didn't really make it any lighter. Uh, green on the sleeves, including the sleeve that had not been painted. A couple versions of tan, light tan on the surcoat, covering the green, and then sort of a light brown on the back, and then a reddish light brown on the inside of the cloak. So give it a reversible type. Left the blood on the mace and everything, wanted to keep it exactly how it had been painted 20-some, oh, excuse me, 40-some years ago. Anyway, I think it came out nice. It's a Ralph Partha figure. These guys painted beautifully, so it really was not that hard for me to make it look good. I think it's a nice figure. Now, I know you guys have understood what I said. None of these I'm spending any real time on. I want to make them quick. This is the Archive Werebear. Um, not that much I did on him. I, I would have done more had I wanted to spend much more time, but I put in the claws, teeth. I did some eyes, but they're really not that visible because of the... Uh, the nature of the casting, and the fact that I wasn't really to spend a ton of time to get it the way I wanted to. If I was going to spend more time, I would have worked on making the fangs look more like fangs and, and the little dots of paint, and I'd have been a little bit more into the detail of the um, the eyes, but I didn't care. I wanted it on the board. I have a nice bear now, which works great, even if I wanted to use it for a druid uh, shape change. This was my little um, ranger. As you see, I, I acquiesced and did paint her a uh, little skirt green to match her hat. It came out good. The rest of it really was just covering up the damage and doing some, some light dry brushing and uh, wash. I really didn't do anything except tone down a little bit on the Brig shirt. It still looks a little, a little arky to me, but realistically, only if you put it close. Again, I always tell people when they're speed painting, realize that you're looking at a figure that's gonna be on the board. And these guys all look good on the board. This is the 1974-75 Monk. Um, in fact, the very funny thing is I think this was likely painted by my friend Dana. He was more likely 13 when he painted this, and I have the exact same figure that I had painted, though I didn't make a little homemade shield like he did. But my guess that was an after paint job. That was something that he likely painted the figure, and then one of his players decided they wanted to have a Monk or a little cleric, and they wanted him to have a shield. So he added that after the fact. Um, that explains it, because really the epoxy had not been painted and stuff, so it was something that looked like he just did it so that, that somebody could use the, the paint job of the Mini. Um, I like it. I think it came out way better than mine did in the 70s. I, I didn't initially like the little green band and the green cloak cover, but once I did it again, I thought, well, it actually added a lot of color and ability. I thought my wash techniques and stuff I used were way better now, you know, 40-some years later than they were back in the 70s. So this actually looked better than the one I had. Um, the thing I wanted to also go over was the little, uh, the little vampire from Ral Partha, 76. Uh, you know, again, because it's gothic, I was really unhappy. You might have seen that it was in the black and the white and the red. Very standard gothic vampire from all your Hammer films. But I thought if I painted him with browns and greens, uh, he might look better. This is what I would call very seldom the slop it on paint. I'm slopping colors on to see what I like and what I don't like. I like the base coat and pants brown. I kind of, I'm beginning to like maybe the reddish brown that I'm going to have on the inside of the cloak. I like the green. I'm not so sure I'm happy with the this kind of orangey brown, but again, I will dry brush it and then wash it and it'll all blend in. But I think this idea of making him brown is going to work out way better. He's going to have more of a medieval feel than a gothic feel, and that I wanted. Again, uh, this time I said I was going to paint his hair black and leave it that way, but I really think I'm going to go with the white hair. It just also makes it look sort of ethereal, kind of that vampire old age stuff. And I wanted that for this figure to be a little different than your plain Dracula type figure that I think it, most people had painted this at. Uh, last but not least was the little two-headed guy I didn't know. Um, he was beat up pretty bad, as you might have seen, but I kept in the color palette, the brown boots, the brown surcoat, the dark brown skin with the greenish yellow hair that he had. 
And I left the two things, the two little blue satchel bags he had. I didn't even touch those. They were perfect the way they were. And the boots, really, everything was fine. The final wash made a difference. I did a little brass for the buttons and the, and the buckle, and it worked out. But I decided to do something that was so very, very archetypally 1975. A lot of these figures did not have a lot of detail. So a lot of times you would make these sort of character faces. This guy you know, if I had painted him up just using the material, you'd really not even see most of his face. So I'd made real, real dramatic eyebrows of this light green. His eyes pop. They're very large and, and kind of white. And the teeth obviously are a good contrast to the dark green. It's a nice little look. I mean, the figure is very ancient. I still don't know what it is. So I just put them on old school minis on YouTube. Great site for looking up information about old minis. And I'm reasonably sure that someone's going to come back to me here today and likely tell me and sh send me a photo of where whoever made this and whatnot. And I'll quickly learn what this figure was. But this is it. I wanted you guys to see the finale. I'm going to go ahead and take a photo of this and then put it on um, my Twitter feed uh, and just let you guys see how things go. Miniatures don't have to be golden demons to be on the board. As you're looking out at this range, this is about the, the range you would normally look at figures. And they, they look great. They look great as almost any of the pre-painted figures that are out there. And even with their age showing and everything else, they're still totally, totally passable figures for a modern game as well. And I could play tomorrow as a, a you know with a bear familiar or bear shape changing ability, and these figures would would sit on any battlefield. And the nice thing about them being so old, no one would recognize them and wonder what they were. Start your own vintage collection of miniatures. Obviously, that's what I did. I didn't plan on having old figures; they just got old on me. A lot of people ask me how I get these figures and what's the best way. And, you know, I, I tell them, I say, well, most of them I got on eBay. But the thing was, most of them I got on eBay 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, you could get these figures for virtually nothing. And I would buy them in all kinds of, you know, bad condition and put them away and eventually get to them. And it really wasn't until Gary Gygax died that I dug them out and started really repainting D&D Zero figures. And then once I did that, my friends like Dana and Don... You know, they knew I was really into the D&D Zero. So they would start looking, you know, for what either they had in their collection that they could give me or what they could find on eBay or SD or any of the other places. And then they'd scoop them up and I'd go over to see Don and he'd give me a box of D&D Zero figures for me to, to look at. Some I liked, uh, some I didn't. Um, but that's the way it goes, you know, and then a lot of the ones I didn't or the ones I didn't need, I would put back on to eBay or SD and let someone else hopefully grab them. Um, some when I, some I sent to Mike, uh, the Goblins of Mordor, figuring he could paint because he always said he would have loved to have painted some of the old ones. So I sent him some old ones to paint. So maybe hopefully soon you'll see him paint up and put out some, some old D&D &D 70s figures because I always think it's nice to paint miniatures that are older than you are. And uh, since I obviously I'm never going to have that opportunity, um, I obviously expose it upon other people to do. So uh, until I have a chance to talk to you again, I've got a, a new video idea in, running through my mind. I want to get up here. So I'm trying to think up how I want to present it and talk about it. And we'll put that up soon. So fight me devils fight for you all know I hate peace and paint on.